Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and today I am traveling all the way back to 2008 so I can take a look at the first edition of Mongoose Traveler. Let's roll it. First off, I have to thank TravelerRPG.com and their wiki about Traveler for all the information about the history of this historic game. And the reason why I have to thank them is because it's a long tale, going all the way back to 1977 when Game Design Workshop put out the first edition of Traveler. Being released in 1977, Traveler is one of the first, if not the first, science fiction role-playing game. Uh, Star Trek Adventures was coming out right around the same time. I have to go back and check to see which one was actually first, but this is one of the first games. Really historic, and Game Design Workshop would continue to publish the game all the way up to 1996. They would, in fact, publish three versions of the game. But the story of Traveler doesn't end there because all told, Traveler has nine different editions, which you can read about over at the My Traveler RPG wiki. And there's also a nice write-up about them over on MyTravelerUniverse.com. I'll put the link to both of those in the description below. Currently, there are two versions of the game which are being published. So the one I'm covering today was first published in 2008, and that is Mongoose Traveler. They continue to have rights for this game all the way up until the present. They are currently on Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition. The other version of the game is from Far Flung Enterprises, which is put out by one of the original authors of Traveler, Mark Miller, who has actually released Traveler version 5, or Traveler 5, which is an update to his fourth edition of the rules, which came out in 1996, after Mark Miller had the rights to Traveler revert to him when Game Design Workshop let them pass. It's a really complex tale. I highly recommend reading the write-ups that I linked to in the description, because it's a fascinating journey that this historic RPG has been on. Now, the bulk of this review is actually going to be about the character creation process, because it is involved and legendary inside the tabletop role-playing game hobby space. There are, as with many tabletop role-playing games, six core stats. They are strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, education, and social standing. All the stats in the game are rolled 2d6, and you assign them to whatever attributes you want based on your values and the type of character you want to play. So it's already differentiating itself from the first commercially published role-playing game, which is now owned by those Coastal Wizard folks, because instead of 3d6, it's 2d6. But 2d6 is going to be the key to the entire game because those are the dice that you use for just about everything. Now, skills are the key to understanding or unlocking the game because at its heart, Traveler is a skill-based system. All skills have different ranks from zero all the way up to two, and those reflect the dice modifiers that you have to your rolls. Trained is level zero. That is no modifier whatsoever, and then one and two above that. If you attempt a task for a skill for which you are not trained, your dice rolls suffer a modifier of minus three. Three. And so obtaining your skills is kind of important. You do have a starting amount of skills. It's going to be three plus your education dice modifier, which is going to be one, two, three, depending on your dice modifier for that attribute. And you can choose these core skills from either your home planet's designation or from the formal education list. Further skills you're going to get from your career path that you take. Skill checks in this game are very simple. You roll 2d6, you add your dice modifier for that attribute and then whatever modifier you have to the skill minus three zero one or two if you exceed or meet the target number then you succeed in that task now your career path is really where character creation takes off because your character starts out at 18 years old and about to embark on their career journey you as a player choose a career and then you have to make an attribute check in order to join it. If you fail, then you have two options. You can enlist in the military or you can become a drifter for a term. 
Each time you join a career, you're going to get basic training. And for your first career, you're going to get the full amount of skills listed on the service skills table. Every subsequent career that you join, you're going to be able to pick one of those off of the service skills table for that career. So the first career you get is going to have a huge impact on your character very much like real life in some respects. And then every subsequent career, you're going to build off of that, but just a little bit at a time. It's a little bit simulationist, but it's kind of enjoyable. So each term for a career lasts for four years. And once you join the career and once you get your basic training, you have to roll for a survival check. So a success for that survival check is going to lead you to a bunch of different events that you can possibly have. It is another table on which to roll. After that, you go to your advancement table. And if you fail, you're going to go to the mishap table and be booted out of that career career. You'll get some mustering out benefits from it, but no advancement. You need to roll 2d6, and the number has to be greater than the number of terms that you've had in that career. If you ever roll a number that matches the number of terms that you've had in that career, well, then you're booted out. You have to muster out and join another career if you want. If you do exceed the number of terms that you've had in that career, then you advance to the next rank, and you get to choose one of the skills from the various specializations that you have for that career path. So by this point, your character is 22 years old and you can make a decision. Are you going to continue with the career? In which case you go through that survival check and mishap or event and then advancement, or you can muster out and choose another career and you can do it all over again with another career path. If you want to have a really well-rounded character, you're going to do a couple of career paths so that you can get skills from a whole bunch of different concepts and then mold them into your character. Also, those events that you have for each of your survival checks inside your career is going to give you things like contacts or someone who is looking to get back at you and new skills as you try to survive the next term in that career. You can go through as many terms in a career path as you can succeed and your character ages up four years each time. So if you do three terms in a career, you're going to start play with a character who is 30 years old, has a bunch of things stashed up because they've mustered out of a career or two and all those skills that they've learned while they have been inside their career paths, including all the contacts and their enemies that they might have accrued on the way, really launches them out with a well-rounded background and a way to move forward with different paths for role play. This is a really intense character creation system. It is involved, almost a game unto itself. I am not entirely sold on it, especially because you're supposed to do this with all the characters at the table. And I just, I'm more of a roll and go type of guy. This would take a while, but I can tell you this, it solves the problem of a character coming to a table like Dungeons and Dragons with a first level character and having a backstory that spans like 40 years and all these incredible things they did. And they have two hit points. In this game, you don't get away with that. You've literally rolled through their career path until the point where they decided to launch out into their adventurer career that you are now going to play. So that is actually really appealing to me. I'm not sold on it, but man, am I willing to try it. And I will say this, if I ever decide to write a science fiction novel and I come to the point where I want to design my characters... The traveler method of character creation, that's pretty much what I'm going to use because it is stellar for creating well-rounded and realistic characters who have a presence inside the world. It's pretty cool. My, Like I said, I'm not totally sold on it because I want to roll and play, but man, my cap is tipped to it because it is a really unique and interesting way to build a character. So the book is hardbound and stitched binding. It is 194 pages, although the last content of the game itself appears on pages 182 to 188 with a rather nice index. There's also a one-page character sheet that appears on page 191. 
The cover of the book is, shall we say, austere. It is pure black. It gives you the sense that you are just out in space. And then there is the Traveler logo with a streak across it and core rulebook underneath. It does give you that sense that you're out into the unknown in this book. And in a lot of ways, it pulls off of the 60s and 70s vibe of science fiction to be this kind of mysterious presence and not the grand fluid artwork that we kind of see in more modern books. It's appealing and unique, and I like it for its minimalist, very clear presentation. The layout of the book itself screams at the top of its lungs, I am old school. The body font itself is just sans serif, and then heading fonts are an italicized sans serif font, which are a little bit decorative. Top level headings and chapter titles are actually an outlined version of that heading font. Everything feels very retro. There is no color at all in the book, and that goes through everything. Tables themselves are very harsh is the way that I would put it. They feel more like first edition player's handbook or first edition AD&D Dungeon Master's Guide tables. There's no lines, but there are very heavy alternating row colors to differentiate one from another. It's not the most friendly looking, but it is highly readable. Headers are really, really simple. There is the chapter title, that italicized heading font in the center of the page, and then a thick line going across the length of the page on both left and right. The footers are very similarly simple. That italicized heading font is just going to be in the lower left and lower right hand corners of the page. It will have nothing but the page number. Everything is clear. Everything is simple. Everything is just there to say, here's where you are. And that's all that it's doing. Like I said, this is old school. Likewise, the art is the same way. It is mostly old school pen ink drawings, line drawings that is going to fit very well with the 1960s, 1970s science fiction motif that the game is known for. Uh, it almost feels in a lot of ways that I'm looking back at some of the stuff from Gamma World or from Expedition to the Barrier Peaks as I flip through all these pages. It's really cool. I, I love like the feel that it goes through. And it does break from that line art motif every now and again. But even in those pieces, which are more grayscale and have a digital drawing feel to it, uh, it's still going to hold that old 1960s, 1970s feel for the game. Very impressive all in all. This 2008 book feels like it should be sitting next to my first edition AD&D Dungeon Master's Guide. It just has that same look and feel to it. Now, I like that our presentation of content has gone beyond what we did in the 1970s. I think it was great for the time. I think that it was clear enough at the time, but we've improved our layout and design a lot since then. And in fact, Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition is a much more modern presentation of this essentially same system. So I would have liked had Mongoose Traveler's first edition maybe moved the design language forward a little bit, but they captured the original heart of this game. And maybe that's what they felt they needed to do as they were just buying the publishing rights back in 2008. So they've emulated this old style perfectly. This is not a knock on the game. It is a compliment, but I'm glad that they've moved on from that point in the follow-up edition. So this is my first experience with Traveler, any edition, which is weird because this game has been around for ever. But back in the day when I was playing RPGs, I just wasn't interested in a science fiction game, and it's still not my favorite genre to play. But this is really well done, and it's got me intrigued. It's got a pretty nice universe that I'm not even covering for this game because the history of it is woven through the history of all nine editions of the game. It's got intense character creation that creates these well-rounded, realistic characters who have depth and weight. And it's got a simple dice mechanic. 2d6, add your skill modifier, add your attribute modifier, and beat the target number, and that's it. So it's fast to pick up to learn the mechanics, even if the character creation design is rather intense. 
there's a lot going for this game. And at some point, if I'm invited to play Traveler or if I have an opportunity to pick up a newer version of Traveler, this is a game that I would probably be interested in playing or running at some point. There's a lot in it that intrigues me. Now, the first edition of Mongoose Traveler is obviously not in print anymore, and unfortunately, Drive Through RPG does not have the PDF of the book. If you're interested to pick up the first edition of Mongoose Traveler for yourself, I found it on eBay at a list price of about $28 to start. You can probably get it for a little bit more than that for a pay what you want or make an offer right now. So maybe 40 bucks you can get a copy of the first edition of Mongoose Traveler. It's a nice little bit of history to have if you're interested in it. If you want to get the second edition of Mongoose Traveler, which has a much more modern presentation and design, you can pick that up at Mongoose Publishing's website. The core rulebook is $60 for both print and PDF. And if you want to buy the PDF by itself, they're selling that for $30. So it's a little bit of a buy-in to get the game, but you do have the whole game at start, just getting that core rulebook. And then you can buy the many supplements that Traveler has added for this edition and for all the editions over the years. If you want to start collecting Traveler, you're going to be doing it for a very long time, and you might have a whole shelf of nothing but Traveler books. There's something intriguing and appealing about that for me. Um, I might have a collection problem. So what's coming up next on the channel? Well, this Thursday, September 14th, 2023, I am pleased to welcome the Dungeon Damsel, as well as her co-author, Zane, who has just come out with a Kickstarter for a new Shadow Dark supplement, Unnatural Selection. It's got some really cool additions to Shadow Dark, and I am really interested to talk with her about the process of what it took to write this supplement to emulate the design language of Shadow Dark without copying it entirely and going to Kickstarter with this really cool cool book. If you're free at 1 p.m. Eastern time on this Thursday, September 14th, I would love to have you join us for that really fun chat. Also coming up in the review queue, I do have the core rulebook of Dragon Bane Red, and I need to begin working on my review of that game. I am also now reading the Fantasy Age 2nd Edition core rulebook. I'm about a third of the way through. It's a bit of a slow read for me, but it's a fascinating system. I know a lot of people love it, and I'm looking forward to talking about it with all of you. Finally, on the back there on the shelf is the Marvel Multiverse game that came out in August. I'm still dying to get into that book. It has been pushed back on my review queue, and I've got a whole bunch of other games. Don't worry, Forbidden Lands is still back there as well. This is something I really want to review, and I'm looking forward to getting to it. There's just so many games, and a lot of people I'm planning on talking with during my skipping lunch streams. So, until we see each other again, folks, happy playing, everyone.